Yippee! Hi guys, and welcome to the Fallout New Vegas Mod Clinic, Part 18. Now, several people have asked about the visuals I am using in my Let's Play Fallout New Vegas series, specifically which mods I'm using and what settings I have chosen. Of course, I'm using NMC's texture pack, the medium version, and I'm also using the improved LOD noise texture mod. Uh, I'm not going to cover those in this video, but I will put links down below if you want to check them out. However, I get the feeling that people really are more interested in the lighting mods, and so that is what I'm going to discuss in this video. I will field one question I know is going to be asked, and that is, why are you not using an ENB? And the simple answer is, I was having difficulties getting any ENB working with hardware anti-aliasing. Hardware anti-aliasing is something I really cannot play without. I cannot stand aliasing, it really bugs me. And although I did manage to get aliasing, anti-aliasing working, it was either too performance hungry or came with a host of other issues. Uh, and in the end, I decided to go for simplicity. So that's the only reason, anti-aliasing. And I do know there are plenty of solutions and I've tried them all and they are pretty good. But again, there is always a cost. So for this Let's Play, I decided to try out a new lighting mod called FNV Realistic Wasteland Lighting. And it is a fairly lightweight and simple mod, and it basically changes the way the light looks. Uh, it specifically seems to remove the yellow tint that you notice throughout the game, that slightly desaturated look where colours are not quite vibrant, and uh, that sort of pink effect you get in the sky. But with this mod, you get a far clearer view, there's, there's none of that fuzzy yellow haze, the sky is a lovely blue colour, and all round, I, I think it just looks a little nicer. The colours look a lot more vibrant. Now, I am not using the word realistic, because that seems to cause all sorts of arguments, uh, and it may not be realistic. For all I know, Nevada does in fact have a yellow glow and a pink sky. Um, I just like the way this mod makes the Mojave Desert feel, and it works for me. And like a lot of these lighting mods, that is going to come down to personal taste. And now this is a lightweight mod, it does not change weathers the same way the Nevada Skies or Project Reality does, it just changes the light. It has more in common with Fellout, and I'm sure most of you have heard of that. But for me, one of the biggest reasons to use this type of lighting mod was the nights, actually. The nights in Fallout New Vegas are something that I really do not like. In the vanilla game, nighttime is not dark. It really is not. Visibility is just as clear as the day. The only thing that has changed is the sky is now sort of a dark blue-black colour rather than light blue or pink. Uh, but the ground itself has been desaturated slightly and given a slight blue tint, but it is absolutely crystal clear. You can see as far during the night as you can during the day, and I really don't like that. And what this mod does is it, it makes the, the nights dark, but not too dark. It's a nice mix. It's a good balance between playable and atmospheric. Um, you can still navigate, you can still wander around, but you won't be seeing quite as far. You probably should still take some night vision, cat eye, and that type of thing if you want to be able to spot enemies at a long distance, i.e. before they spot you, but you won't need it to just get around. This is probably actually my favourite lighting mod for Fallout New Vegas with regards to the nights. They really are quite atmospheric while still being fairly playable and without really making it too hard to play. Now, it's not all uh, pros, there are a few cons. There, there is one thing I'm not too keen on with this mod, and that is the sun. In the vanilla game, when you look at the sun, you get a lot of bloom, you get this sort of big glare. And I like that, I really do. But with FNV Realistic Wasteland Lighting, that effect seems to be gone, and I'm not that keen on that. I would like to see that returned. However, I do know a lot of people are reporting they actually get a performance boost using 
this mod and that may be something to do with the fact that the the HDR um, the bloom effects have been reduced somewhat so you know it's probably one of those things that for some people the removal of that effect has actually had uh, a benefit a plus for them all round this is a really solid lighting mod it's very lightweight it it does exactly what it says on the box it makes the lighting look for me a little better I, I do prefer it especially at night and this is probably a very good option for those of you with uh, weaker systems who still want the game to look just a little better now one of the mods I could not live without in Fallout New Vegas is the interior lighting overhaul the lighting in Fallout New Vegas like Fallout 3 is not that brilliant um, it's, it's something that's fairly typical of Bethesda games. Uh, the lighting looks a little bland, a little sterile, and not very realistic. It seems to be designed really to let you see everything. Even whilst trying to hint that it's dark, it just fails to deliver actual dark. You can always see. You never really need to use your Pip-Boy or any type of light cat eye and other types of night vision are pretty much useless there's no point them being in the game and what interior lighting overhaul does is it fixes that for interiors it dramatically changes the way light works it reduces the ambient light that sort of light that seems to come from absolutely nowhere and this emphasizes lights that come from light sources and it just makes scenes interior scenes look a lot more realistic and a lot more atmospheric and this is even more true of areas such as dungeons or places where you know it's not very well lit at all you're going to find yourself having a lot of trouble seeing into some corners if there are no lights you're going to need your pit boy light and you're also probably going to need either night vision or something like the flashlight mod but this actually makes the game feel so much more intense it makes certain places a lot scarier more atmospheric a lot creepier and there are some areas where there is absolutely no light source and so you really can see almost nothing at all um, and there's a very distinct difference between areas that are dark and areas that are lit and, and it really does enhance the feeling of realism. The mod also adds light switches so you can actually turn the lights on and off in a lot of places which is a cool feature actually. I mean it's not essential and it doesn't really change much but it actually adds to that feeling of immersion, the, the option to actually turn the lights on and off. All round, this is a brilliant mod. I mean, it covers everything. It covers all of the interiors in the vanilla game and the DLCs and in many of the popular mods as well. Really well done. And as I said, it's one of those mods I don't think I could live without anymore. Now there is one other mod that I use for visuals and that mod is called Dynavision 3. Now Dynavision 3 is actually several mods merged into one, one of them originally called Dynavision and the compilation is really by three mod authors, myself, Mercurios and MGE. It's um, sort of a fairly large overhaul of many different aspects of the visuals. And the most obvious one of them is the Dynavision effect. And the Dynavision effect is what gives the slight blur in the background now. The defocused look. And if I get closer, it might even get stronger. Um, and then when I look off to the background, the background becomes clear. And as you can see, Eddie became a little blurred. That is the dynamic depth of field effect. And it's probably the most obvious effect. And everyone wants to know what my settings are for for this mod. And if I bring up, you can see the I'll bring up this menu and look somewhere a little easier for you to see the road, for example. I have no stylings, no imaginator settings, and I have depth of field set to active, low strength, slowest change. So low and slow is how I have it set. And as you can see, the Dynavision mod is configurable. You can configure it either from the MCM system, 
under Dynavision where you can change the lighting, the camera effects, uh, when the effects apply. So for example, are these effects applied during combat? Should they only happen during screenshot mode and so on? And there is even a film grain effect. Uh, now I'm not going to go into a lot of depth about this mod because I made a completely separate video. If you want to check out everything on that video, uh, you are more than welcome. I will leave a link here. Oh, and it should be noted that using Dynavision is fairly low impact compared to things like ENB mods. Uh, I notice a very small performance drop using the dynamic depth of field and the film grain, maybe about 10% maximum, uh, but it will vary machine to machine. However, I will tell you this now, it still doesn't have a lot of the special effects that ENB mods will have, such as ambient occlusion, dynamic shadows, and so on. So, again, it's a matter of personal preference, and it is a trade-off. The reason I use Dynavision for this type of thing rather than EMB is I like the high performance. I also like some of the control things, for example, um, the depth of field I have switches off when I go into combat. I like that. So when I go into combat, it, I don't really care about the image looking nice. I just want to shoot things and focus on it, and I want as much performance as possible. So little things like that are why I use this. That and the fact that I help make the mod, of course. Oh, and because some of you are probably going to ask what the settings were in this shot, I can show you. Cinemator style Western post-apocalypse, Cinematech style Trek Vaseline cam, medium subtle green, and low Dynavision. So, there you go. Okay guys, that is about it for this video. I hope it adequately explains what I do to my game to make it look the way it looks, and I hope you guys found it helpful. If you are ever wondering what mods I am currently using, you can always check out my latest Let's Play Fallout New Vegas. I have a full mod list right below it every single episode. Whenever it changes, I change that list so you can always keep up to date. And of course, you can always join me for another Fallout New Vegas mod clinic. And I will look forward to seeing you guys on any of those videos. And whichever video you decide to join me for, until then, as always, have fun. That jingle, jangle, jingle, jingle, jangle, as I go riding merrily along. Jingle.